I just want to commend you guys for making such a powerful and great film. And at the same time, I wish I never saw this movie. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of those kind of things. And I'm, I'm sure you guys feel the same. Um, it, you know, uh, I, it, it, that's a weird way to start an interview, but it's such a powerful film. Um, uh, and, but so I like throwing a curveball at the beginning um, before we get into the film. And this is for the actors. Uh, for you guys, if someone has actually never seen anything you've done before, what is the first thing you want them watching and why? Super easy, I think, for me. It would be the movie that I'm in right now. <laughs> I, wish I, could, I wish I could think about it right, right? <laughs> No, no, it's, it's a totally valid, that, that's, I've heard that from many people. I ask this question to a lot of actors. Yeah, I think that's probably the answer. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll move on and just say- uh, Steve, you've yeah, got I, an abundance of riches to choose from with these guys. Look at their repertoire. Everything's amazing. Yeah, they're, they're all, yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Um, uh, Abby, I'm curious, um, I know it's a little generic, but how have you been describing the film to people? Um, how, how do you, I mean, I, I know it's like, you have to, uh, how have you been describing the film? It's a one man's sincere hearted rebellion against a broken system. It, what was, uh, can you sort of talk a little bit about um, how you actually first connected to the material, what it was that said, I have to make this film? Sure. Um, well, first off, I was flabbergasted that I hadn't read or heard about Brian's story uh, when it happened, because usually you, you feel like this, this story would be um, with such a sensational tone to it, we would have heard about it. It would have popped in, in the national news. Um, but when I read Aaron Gell's article, which is my first encounter with the story, I had never heard about it. And I actually saw it when I was driving my car. So I pulled over to the right side of the road and read all 30 some pages of it. And I wept. My, my heart was broken that the story hadn't been told. Um, in it, I saw a reflection of guys that I knew growing up that were close with my dad and my dad's a vet as well. And I saw his own struggles, his quiet rage, his, his desperation reflected in Brian's story. And there was an intimacy and a, and a, a beauty in Brian, uh, in his, his, uh, quiet refrain of, of longing for dignity that, uh, I felt that that I understood on a deep level. And then I partnered with Kwame to, to make sure that we told Brian's story honestly. There's so many different themes that are happening in our country that needed to be talked about honestly. And, and uh, uh, sh I'm not sure uh, if he wasn't able to log on or something's going on, but um, if, if Kwame were here, he, he would say that um, that heartbeat that heartbeat of Brian's story was one that resonated strongly with him and that he had to tell as well. Um, for the cast, I, I know you guys have all read scripts many times. Scripts like this do not come along too often. And I'm just curious, what was your initial reaction um, after reading this and your emotional connection to the material? I was, I was really moved, moved by the material, really, really moved. Um, especially, it came, it came at a, a time where I hadn't been reading a lot um, and, and, and um, I'd spent a lot of time with, with family. And so it was a quiet time for for separation from work. But this script was, was something that my, my agent was just like, you really, really need, do need to read this. Um, and, and you wouldn't guess that this is based on a true story. This is actually crazy. And in reading this and discovering Brian and his um, connection to his, his daughter, there's one perspective as a human being, and I'm kind of like, wow, this is an incredible story. This is incredibly moving. And then the other perspective of, of an actor, I'm like, this is also a great opportunity to, to show versatility as well. And to jump into a role that I, I feel like was written to be quite powerful and, and, and dynamic, as well as the other roles that we have in this as an ensemble. So um, it all just, you know, balanced out for me from just reading that script. Honestly, it was after having a conversation with Abby and then going, uh, reading, reading the script and then reading the article that the script was based off of and, and being in shock, similar to Abby, that no one, that I hadn't, that I hadn't heard about this story. And I think I, as I text Abby, I, there was so much anger and frustration that you feel uh, uh, for Brian, for this situation, for the entirety of this situation, for everybody's lives connected to it, to his daughter, to his, to his ex-wife, to his family. Um, so I think it was 
I, I just had such a profound reaction. Um, and as, as John was saying, during the time period being, you know, with family and, and having this kind of quiet reflection and being able to be a part of something that uh, feels bigger than you and has a message and is important and, and can change um, a conversation or a narrative or an understanding is something that doesn't come often. Yeah. Um, after reading it, um, it's, it's so well told every, like, all these people have such a vested interest in um, that they're real people, that it's a real story. Abby's passion and drive obviously just like magnetizes to it. But um, I also at that moment in, in, in my life and the moment in the pandemic was sort of having a conversation with myself about like disability, the able versus the disabled and how we're treated in society, even people with like immunocompromises, et cetera. Um, and this in a very strange way still kind of addresses that, addresses like how people can be dis discarded um, if they don't fit within a certain like neurotypical, um, you know, framework. Uh, and so I just wanted to sort of get behind that and yeah. Yeah, I thought it was a really beautiful way of, of, of doing that and having that conversation about what we do as a society. Um, I have spent, uh, I've learned over the last number of years how frustrating it is to deal with the VA uh, before this film. And I'm, I'm just curious, what did you guys sort of take away or what did you learn or what do you want to shine a light on about the what the people have to deal with at the VA? Because it just, it's so frustrating. It's, um, it, it makes you very angry. I didn't ever think about the the VA, particularly when I first read it. It didn't build like the frustration about the VA. It was more about this man, like this and and this this baby, this daughter who 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 because of the these the circumstances of, of of the lack of support coming back can't be the best he can be to uphold you know a family unit that can make sure this baby's taken care of you know. And I just, you just imagine it from different perspectives as, uh, as well, and and the script itself allows you to do that where you're seeing how other people's lives are, are, are kind of tied into this, you know, tragic, tragic event. And, and this, this the, fail, the failing of a system, but at the same time, just the crumbling of a man, just as by himself, like just his individual story. So for me, it was, I was, I was most certainly broken by, by how he saw himself, like his, his, his existence, his state of existence, like that to me, cause you know, I'm the type that will, will, will get, will feel, can feel incredibly sorry for someone. But when you're then getting the details, like Abby had a lot of information and then you're in the environment, you're now seeing the bank, you're realizing, no, oh, this is, this was a real man's life. I think it was more about, for me anyway, you know, about his individual path rather than the, the, the qualms of the VA, because it seems to be very clear that people know about the confusion that they cause. I would imagine that, um, that, I am actually curious, when you're making something that's this heavy in the material and so serious, what is it actually like in between takes on set? Um, are you, are, for, for the cast, are you guys staying in some sort of emotional space to help you with the next take? Or do you find that you're like leaving that and just trying to decompress? I'm, I'm just curious, I love talking to actors about how they work on set. To me, it felt uh, taking the lead from Abby you know, and, and, and taking the, that approach of, of how um, I really, I admire how, how direct and, and soft-spoken and, and clear she can be with her giving of direction. And that kind of sets a tone for everybody's professionalism on, on set. Um, and I think there's just a common understanding of respecting, respecting the story and, and showing up your best to your best ability and, and being present with, with your partner and being available to your to, to this story. And I think that was set from the top down. Steve, I can, you know, from my bird's eye view of all the different actors processes, everyone works differently and needs something different for what their role demands. And we had a lot of really demanding parts. Uh, John, I mean, <laughs> wow, the, the nuance, the, the beauty of, of everything that you captured for Brian, it's a very demanding role for, for Nikki. It's, it's something where you're constantly in a state of heightened tension. Like all of your senses have to be alert and awake 
And it's a different demand of someone who has the safety of their home um, until that safety net is broken with Olivia. And uh, the, the demands of those things, my job is to facilitate the needs of an actor to be able to do their best work, right? So, uh, you know, sometimes you do that perfectly, sometimes you don't, and you, and you find you find the, the rhythms of that within each actor. Um, and it's, it's a beautiful thing when Salinas and, and Nikki are able to play off of each other within that tension and build a relationship. And uh, when, when John and, and Mike are in separate spaces, but building intimacy because they're on the phone together and, and able to directly communicate and pierce through all of the infrastructure that is around their characters. It's, it's a really lovely thing to see the, 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 the art of it come come to life uh welcome welcome to the uh welcome to the party hi kwame kwame we welcome me you. i literally just got the time wrong <laughs> i'd love i'd love to come on and blame technology or blame something Profound yeah. apologies. i'm just gonna blame me yeah, you <laughs> sorry we're for happy to see you at any hour kwame god bless you sorry guys um, thank you for joining us. Uh, be, I, I have, I will have a question for you, but uh, Abby, I'm, I am, I love talking about the editing process just because that's ultimately where it all comes together. Um, and I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about what it was like in the editing room uh, crafting this story, um, and uh, uh, if you could just talk about the challenges or lack of challenges. You know, so often in in our film, I was really privileged that it was really clear which takes were were right. Um, it felt like in, in Nikki's work, in, in John's work, and Olivia's work, they were building towards something in a lot of their takes. And yeah, there's nuance within those, but so often it was, okay, let's go one more. Let's go one more. And, oh, I need one more. Or, and for me, it's like, great, you want one more. <laughs> You've got another idea that can make it richer and stronger and, and more powerful and more truthful. I love that. And, and so often those are the takes that make it um, more nuanced, more alive, more truthful. And that's what we're after, right? So on the, when we're editing and actually I live right here, um, the, the, the choice becomes really clear because those are the most truthful ones. And then you just shape it ar around what is most truthful. So I think my first cut, you just put everything that's great in there. <laughs> and then it's a matter of saying, okay, well, we kind of repeated that beat here, which one's stronger. Um, and that's it. That's your job as a director. Just leave the, leave the good bits and the strongest and most truthful bits in there. I love learning about like the behind the scenes of making movies, shows, uh, and, and learning like cool things that you might not know. So for all of you guys, what do you think might surprise people to learn about the making of the film or something you'd like to share with people that was really special to you? That for the majority of the phone calls, we were all present. Um, even though I was in the house and John was in the bank, John was actually in the house and I was at the bank. So that was fun. And for folks who don't know, usually for phone calls, there's the director on the other end of the call or the script supervisor, and you lose you lose quite a bit of authenticity in the in the communication between the actors. But if you've got the actual character on the other end of the line, you're able to capture that truth, that vibrancy, and really the conflict that's inherent to the calls. Yeah, and I I mean I was going to say that it felt like. Um, it felt theatrical in nature and that we were present and in the circumstances almost all the time while we were in the space, while we were for the, I can only speak for the bank people. <laughs> um, that's how it felt to me. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's a very particular thing because a lot of times it's about like your coverage and getting bits and pieces. And it was like, no matter what we were doing, we were still, in the world and there, and, there, and there was no sort of, I think that's why that earlier question that you asked about whether we stayed in it or what we did, we kind of, I don't know if we stayed 100% in the circumstances, but it wasn't like, and cut, and now we're like listening to the radio and talking about Sunday and what we like did. We, we very much were honoring the energy of the space. And also we were shooting during the height of, I think the first Delta wave. So there was that sort of increased 
we had it within the actual story, but this increased hypervigilance as well about like our safety and just the world that we're living in that I think also kind of feeds the story in a way. You know, I think it takes a lot to shoot during those moments, um, mm -hmm. you know, and so hats off to the cast and crew and all the directors. Props. For Props doing to that. you. I mean, Salinas isn't here, but I'm sure if she she would, she would speak to, to you because you two played off of each other so beautifully. And it was incredibly demanding for both of you to live under that vigilance, that um, that that hypertension of every am I gonna come. That's everyone that was working, even the, just the crew. I mean, everyone was like, we have to stay well, we have to keep this thing going, you know? Um, and you and you could feel it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then especially with what John and Salinas were giving, you know, what you, I don't know how you even made it through with all the energy you were expanding because I feel like that would completely deplete anyone's immune system. <laughs> 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 he was like full gasket blown, but yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Kwame, we haven't spoken to you yet. And I'm just curious, how did you, how did you and uh, Abby actually hook up to write this together and work on this together? Uh, we have a mutual manager, Max, and uh, and I was in Los Angeles, and he said, "You kind of got to meet this filmmaker, Abby. If you don't, you'll you'll regret it." And uh, and she's working on this at the moment, and uh, and then sent me uh, the article. I, I I read the article. I I watched Abby's film, and then I turned up at dinner and begged. <laughs> And <laughs> he likes to rewrite history, this guy. Uh, you know, I, I, the, the, the truth of the matter is once one read the story and realized that this wasn't as large as any of the other big events that we have seen in racial justice history, um, um, I, I, I was in. But from the moment that I also read and realized that this was this was a quint quintessentially 21st century heist. He didn't take no money. He held hostages, but what he did say was, listen to my story. He called a local media station and said, listen to me. And, and that I, I found really, really fascinating. And uh, and wanted to, to be part of the baton pass on, because I think he entered into that space and said, you know, listen to me. He called the, the stations and said, listen to me. And even though that happened, the story was still not as amplified as it should be. And I think that, that Abby, myself, and this brilliant collection of artists have kind of just taken the mic, taken the baton and said, we will continue to sing your song. That's why. I'm, I'm very thankful that you guys um, uh, made this film. Um, my last question for you guys, because I got to wrap. Uh, what does it mean for all of you to be part of the Sundance Film Festival and getting to show this uh, at such a such a great fest? It gives us hey, a please. platform. Oh, please, John. No, no, no. It, it, it definitely is a is a great is a great platform. You know, I was at Sundance a good few years ago, and um, I didn't really understand what it was at the time. I was kind of like, you know, just getting into the industry and stuff. So after I realized, oh, you know, it is a it's a platform for a lot of creatives to to connect and, and for a lot of people to see a film that they wouldn't usually usually see you know we all know what where our industry is at big studios aren't making movies like this as much um and to see you know especially a first-time director like abby being given a chance to make something dynamic and then now the uh, the right eyes will, will, will potentially be on this movie i think it's a great a great opportunity um obviously i was i was hoping to be back to a face-to-face Sundance um, to just to get the feel of the vibe and meet the filmmakers, but obviously we know what's for the what's for the best of our health and stuff. But it is good to know we can do it at least do it this way and still communicate and connect. And I, I hope that people at Sundance and the audiences are going to see the movie, get it, and 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 have the opportunity to see it. It's my first Sundance, and uh, you know, and I'm a bit like yo, and it's virtual, which I think again is magnificently third decade of the 21st century you go yeah. oh, why? why be physical y'all <laughs> let's just switch it on so I, I know that but most importantly I'm really I'm really proud um that this film has made it to Sundance I'm really proud of Abby's work that that led us here and I'm really magnificently proud 
of of the actors and the artists that put everything in to make this because this you know it nearly didn't make it and it's it is a testament to everybody's tenacity and brilliance that here we are having this conversation so I, i'm just proud that, that we've made it I think I have to stop there because you have other interviews to do. Uh, I'm just going to sincerely say, and, and uh, I watched a lot of movies. Uh, they're not all this good. Um, and I just want to commend all of you guys for, uh, for such a great job and for telling Brian's story. Thank you, Mel. Thank you.